Hi, I'm Raj Kumar, here once again at the European Development Days in Brussels, and joined by Pekka Havisto, who is the Minister of International Development of Finland, and uh, someone well known as the, the runner-up, the person who came in second place in the Finnish uh, presidential elections just last year. So it's an honor to have you here. Thank you for joining us. You know, DevEx members are from around the world, and so I thought maybe to start, you might just tell us a bit about Finland's international development program, and you know, what makes it distinctive, and to what extent is it working with uh, individuals and organizations who are all over the world? Well, maybe first thing is that we have some of these so-called program countries, sub-Saharan African countries, some countries in Asia like, like Nepal, which have been uh, long-term partners for Finland, seven, eight countries like Mozambique, Zambia, Kenya, and so on. And then, of course, we are now more and more looking at the fragile states, actually, countries like Somalia, Burma, Myanmar, uh, looking what could, uh, southern Sudan, what could be doing these fragile situations. And then of our overall budget, which is around 0 0.6 of our GDP, uh, we are using for uh, the uh, non-governmental organization, included the international non-governmental organization, around 12 percent nowadays. So it has been increasing actually the, both the percentage and the, the used amount during the years. Okay, and you're also using, I assume, some of it toward budget support directly supporting governments um, and, and individual projects as well that you fund? Yeah, we are using budget support, but budget support is very much debated in the Finnish parliament. You know, we, we went towards the budget support, then we had some backlashes, and, right. and then we are trying to continue it and so on. So the same discussion, I think, about the, the modalities of the budget support is going on in Finland as, as many other countries. And I imagine it's particularly hard in the environment of austerity when the economy in general in Europe is, is undergoing a lot of strain. How has that argument played out in Finland? Well, of course, in among the Finnish population, actually, the, the, the question that do, does the aid really go, where we say it goes, and so on, can we follow it, and, and uh, how the taxation systems in these countries are established, that is coming more and more, actually, a question. Right. Do these people pay taxes? Do these companies pay taxes? Yeah. And so on. So, uh, so the, the taxation debate, which has actually been, been in Europe, it has been in Finland, mm -hmm and against these tax havens has come also to the development uh, cooperation very much. Yeah, we had Eva Jolie uh, sitting in that chair just uh, yesterday and saying that tax havens and eliminating them should be one of the top priorities of the development agenda, uh, which is a somewhat new uh, theme to think of from a development lens. Yeah, that's definitely definitely so. And, and then, of course, also, you know, the, the public is asking whistleblowing, rapid whistleblowing. Now we are trying to add to our web page the red button. If you see something wrong in the development corporation, please push the button and tell what you know. Yeah. So, you know, this kind of transparency is also very important, not only what's happening in these countries, but yeah. also that, that, you know, you as a citizen or as a parliamentarian or as a as an individual who, who thinks that something is going wrong, you can react. This moment of austerity is forcing us to kind of rethink some issues yes. in development. I know one of them is finding new sources of, of funding for development. That's one of the things you're here to talk about. You found uh, some ways through carbon credits and the financing around that to generate new funding for development aid. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah actually, if I put it in a bit of big, bigger framework, uh, Finland is co-chairing this uh, for the post-2015 uh, working group on, on uh, new financing instruments. We are co-chairing that with the World Bank. And of course, then we have been thinking also ourselves that could we have some innovative uh, financing tools uh, domestically. And one that has been agreed now in the Finnish government is, is uh, uh, income from the emission trading. When we, when we sell the CO2 quotas to, to the, the companies and so on, all that income is now coming to the development corporation, 100%. Right. And it has been actually, it, it has been remarkable in the way that it has uh, increased our percentage from 0 0.55 to 0 0.6 and, 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 and so, so we are really at the same time when we have very tight budget situation in, in the country and almost all sectors are cutting, we have been able to increase uh, quite substantially our development budget. Yeah, that is an unusual circumstance to be in, and, and this is a form of financing that could grow, I imagine, over time, as the value of those carbon emission credits grows. Yeah, we, we are now paying five, uh, uh, $5 per, per ton, but, but one day maybe it's $20 per ton and so on, so this could be uh, potentially very, very uh, good 
financing instrument. Yeah, it seems like we're at this new moment where we're finding new forms of financing, new partnerships with corporations, new ways of working overall. I wonder if you have any message for Europe aid as you're here. As, as Finland, are you talking to the European Commission pushing their aid program in a particular direction? What's your view about Europe aid? Well, I, I, I think one issue, of course, is, is this uh, creative thinking in the financing tools. Another is the partnerships. We need the civil society, we need the private sector, and then we need the official ODA. One, one maybe issue that we have found in Finland very good approach when we speak about countries like Somalia or, or Myanmar is that we have a quite active diaspora in the countries. These are educated people who are now ready to do something for their country. We have had the programs to the IOM and so to, to have nurses in Somalia who have been trained in Finland, Finnish citizens, Somali background, working in Somalia, but also uh, businessmen. Somali businessmen or, or people in Myanmar who are now putting new businesses in their own country uh, coming from Finland. And I'm quite proud actually of, of this kind of approach and we try to engage them as well to our development projects uh, as actively as we can.